Welcome to Something More. I'm your host, Kelsey O'Malley, and today I have with me Dale Mast. Dale has been a pastor for 39 years. So you've studied the Bible. I'm, I'm just going to guess here intricately because you, you've been a pastor a long time. Yes. And so you wrote a book called Two Sons and a Father, and it's about the story out of Luke 15, the prodigal son. How did that parable pop out to you out of all the things in the Bible you could have written about, why did you choose that one? Well, actually my father was raised by a man who was an orphan. My grandfather was an orphan. Mm -hmm. And so that fatherhood issue in my father's life was real. And then as my father raised me, so my father who was raised by an orphan is now raising me. And I realized there were some things missing in my life. And when I read this parable, I saw things I never saw before that actually revealed to me that I need to live as a privileged son, not as an orphan son or a grandson of an orphan. So did the Holy Spirit give you downloads? Like, because as we study the Bible, as we read it, you know, we ask for insight. Lord, give us insight into what this means. Give us deeper revelation. So for you to write a whole book on that one parable, was the Holy Spirit just giving you downloads or was this because it was the actual life you lived? It's actually both because there, Unless we are living what we are receiving revelation, it turns into a theory that helps no one. But literally what God does, He gives us revelation and then we live it and then it produces fruit. And in the fruit is seeds that literally help millions of people. And so I know that today, as we're talking about this, it's going to break off an orphan spirit and people that realize, don't even realize they carry one. Now, this is what I say, and as we get into this, until you lived as a privileged son or daughter, you're still affected by an orphan spirit. And I'm going to explain this for a minute. If, if uh, I, I do this in front of a uh, church, I, I will stand up this man and his daughter, and I'll say, uh, you know, I'll ask the daughter of the father, say, have you written four books? No. And I say, I am, I want everyone to know I am more important. And everyone goes, and, and I said, <laughs> have you traveled to seven, you know, I'm 40 some nations or whatever? And she says, no, I, said, I know now I'm more important. And people are like, they're really put off, mm -hmm. and, but I'm taking them somewhere. Then I, I, I prophesied over tens of thousands of people. Have you done that? And she says, no. And I, I said, I told you, I, I settled my case. Then I look at the father and I say, uh, when she turns 16, will you help her buy a car? He said, well, sure. I said, now, would you help me buy a car? He says, no way. I said, now hold it. I'm more important. Why would you help her buy a car and not me? The father will say this, she's my daughter. Mm -hmm. This is the problem God, the Father God has. We're all trying to be more important instead of being a son and a daughter to the father. And he's waiting for us to quit it. Mm. We don't need to try to be important. If you're a son or a daughter, you have a privilege with father God that opens up everything he has. So then I'll do one more. I'll say to the daughter, put your hand on your father's shoulder and repeat after me. And she'll look up at her dad and I'll say, Dad, you're the best father. I love you. There's no father like you. You're so strong. You're so wise. Can I have $10,000? And everyone will start laughing, but that father's digging in his pockets because the relationship with the daughter is right. The stuff is now simply the privilege she enjoys because she has right relationship with the father. So what about, um, you know, there's a lot of people watching where they are parents to children that are wayward. Yes. So they're not following the Lord. They don't really know the Lord. Maybe they were raised knowing the Lord, but now they're off. So the younger son in that parable, let's talk about him first. Yes. Because he wanted everything and he wanted to do his own thing. So how is that like a lot of us really, or those who are lost and away from the Lord right now? Well, this is part of the uh, revelation that I never saw before. That what I realized was the prodigal son went to the father and what did he say? I want my inheritance. Mm -hmm. Now, actually 
the prodigal knew how to receive from Father God better than his older brother. Wow. He asked for it. And what the Lord showed me was, we judge what he did with the inheritance, but we miss the key that he asked for his inheritance. Now, That's so good. It's okay, so that we judge the prodigal for what he did with it. Now, why would Father God give an inheritance to a son that he's going to waste it? Because in it, the father wants the son. He has deep pockets. He can bless that son, and he would rather have him waste what he has to come back to find him. Mm. And sometimes a prodigal literally has to have another experience to realize the Father is everything. And the Lord loves us so much, sometimes He will give us what we ask for, and He knows it will actually, we will not manage it well, but in the end, it will bring us back to Him. Mm. So the Father, you know, after He gave it to Him, He can't chase the prodigal son down. But he's standing outside of his house because he knows he's coming back. And he's trusting for him to come back. And you know, some of you might have prodigal children. And you can't chase them down. You have to trust God that God is going to bring them back. I just want to share this with you. You know, my oldest son, through my wife who passed away with cancer, he was literally he wasn't really walking with God during that time. Mm -hmm. And uh, just and there were some bipolar issues, and uh, he really had a difficult time. And uh, he went out to California and living homeless. Mm. Wow. And uh, he's a great guy uh, in many ways, but just his anger did some stupid stuff, and uh, he, he ended up in jail, and I got a call, mm. a call I never thought I would ever get in my life. And uh, I'm getting ready to go to bed, and uh, I can't sleep. Mm. And uh, God says to me, Dale, what are you doing? I said, my son's in jail. And he said, uh, do you have this or do I have this? He said, if I have it, go to sleep. If you have it, stay up and worry. I said, thank you, Father God. I'm going to sleep. And I stand waiting. But, you know, even while my son was in jail, he read his Bible. Mm -hmm. God kept working on his heart. It's still in a process. I mean, he got out, and different things have still been ensuing. But every step of our relationship has been getting better. But I have to trust God with my prodigal. Amen. And when we come back, we're going to continue uh, sharing about the reality of Luke 15, of how we walk in that, how we have family members who walk in that, and what God wants to do for you to change that situation around. We'll be right back. Welcome back. You know, we were talking about the younger son out of the uh, parable of Luke 15, the prodigal son. And now let's get into the older son, who he's kind of at the end of the parable. Not many people pay much attention to his heart, but what has God revealed to you about him? Well, first of all, it's interesting that the prodigal did not want to be with his father, so he left. The elder son did not know how to live in his father's presence. Mm. And in it, the prodigal who came back had to leave the famine, the foreign field, the pigs, to come to his father's house. He made the journey. The elder son had to leave his father's fruitfulness fields, his father's servants, and the work of his hands. He could not make the journey to the house. If you remember, wow. when the father is throwing a party and celebrating the, the prodigal's return, and I just want to make a point here, when he gave him the sandal, the ring, and the robe, that was not the restoration of the son. That was the restoration 
of things. The restoration of the Son was when the Son came into the celebration of the Father. A lot of Christians are believing, I want the stuff back, I want back the authority, yeah. but they miss the celebration of the Father. And if we do not have the celebration of the Father over our lives, the genius, the anointing that's in us will never come up to give Him glory and honor. So as this celebration is there, think about this. The Father's looking around, Father God's looking around, the elder brother, where is he? He steps out of the house again, and he says something very interesting to the elder brother. He says, uh, he says uh, you know, aren't you going to come in? And, he's, and, the, and the, the, elder, the elder brother, he says, listen, you've never thrown a party for me and my friends. And now you not even killed a goat for me and my friends, and, and now you're throwing this party for him. And what does the father say? He said, everything I have is yours. Yes, yes. Now, you know what's very interesting? When the father gave the younger son his inheritance, actually he gave it to the elder brother as well. But this was the problem. The elder brother judged the father for giving an inheritance to a son that didn't deserve it in his eyes. Mm -hmm. And when he judged the father, he cut off his ability to receive the inheritance that was being split right in front of him. Wow. Our judgment. So in other words, if I have a church and I and I see God blessing a church down the road, and I feel, well, I'm more, I'm, I'm more godly. I pray more than that man. God, why did his church triple and mine's still the same size? As I judge, I'm actually judging God as unfair. Wow. That actually stops me from receiving an inheritance. So literally, the elder son is slaving in his father's field trying to earn what he would not ask for. Mm. Do you know what? God and Tom Brady have the same problem. You remember Tom Brady about oh, seven seasons ago? He lost the one guy, went, you know, uh, got another contract. The other guy was injured. And so Tom Brady's throwing the ball. The problem is he doesn't have enough experienced receivers. The church has become the achievers, not the receivers. It's not how much okay. can you achieve, it's how much can you receive. And so in it, this is the part, this elder son, his receiver was broken, and the father's saying, everything I have is yours. Yeah. But you know what he wouldn't do? He would not ask for it. The Bible says, ask and you shall receive. See that story I told in the beginning, when the daughter asked the father, when she also gave thanks for her father, then asked for the 10,000, because the relationship is right, now what you ask for is yours. Mm -hmm. So, as the elder son is out there, now think about this. There was another reason he would have been a little bit upset. Under Jewish understanding, mm -hmm. he would have gotten a double portion okay. because he's the firstborn, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So when the, when the prodigal comes back, guess what? The reason he got a double portion is when the father is gone, he was supposed to take care of and do what the father did. So he would actually have to give that part of the double portion to his brother. And really, he didn't want to do that. But this is the interesting thing. Both of them wanted fatherless parties. Mm. Think about it. Yeah. Both of them. He said, why don't you throw a party for me and my friends? He didn't, see, he didn't want the father there. He just, the other one went and had parties with foreign people. They didn't want the father there. When are we going to start having parties with Father God entering into His celebration and we celebrate Him? So what if we are resonating a lot with this story and we're saying, I am the person, I, I thought I was the younger, but I'm actually the older because I'm jealous over what God has given other people. I mean, even, even with this show, you know, a lot of you guys watch this show and say, there's so many anointed people with yeah. amazing stories and God, you've never come uh, to my house. You've never touched me like that. And you build this blockage in your heart of like what you're saying against God, you have resentment against God. So. Lead us through a prayer for, for many who in their heart have said, I've been doing that. Yeah, and the truth is, we, we come to Jesus as a prodigal, and after five years in the church, we become the elder son. 
Mm, that's <laughs> it's, true. It, because, oh, with the mercy of God, now they're not good enough. So right now, I'm going to just tell you this, you're not going to receive from Father God because you've been good. You're going to receive because you ask of His goodness. If you will just simply ask, and I'm just say this, just ask, say, Father God, I am your son, I am your daughter, I love you, I worship you. I'm asking you for the best of heaven. Because you love me the best, I expect the best, and I receive the best, and that is the prayer of a privileged son and daughter. Live that way, and you're going to have the most exciting life because you ask out of relationship to the Father. Amen. And when we come back, we're going to be sharing more about the Father's role in the story. And we're going to be praying for you guys. We're going to be ministering over you, prophetically releasing words. So you don't want to miss it. We'll be right back. Call now and get Dale Mass's revelatory book, And David Perceived He Was King, and his two-part audio CD teaching series, Shattering the Limitations of Pain, Overcoming Identity Thieves, plus his pamphlet, Your Destiny Tracking System. This is an exclusive offer for our It's Supernatural audience. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9812. In this compelling book, And David Perceived He Was King, Dale Mass takes you through the life of David and David's journey to become King of Israel to reveal how God also has a divine destiny and purpose for your life. Discover that God established David's identity as king of Israel even when he was just a shepherd boy. Begin to understand that when you were young, God began revealing to you your God-given destiny and purpose. Realize how God is transitioning you into fulfilling His calling for your life. Understand that the key to accessing all of God's promises and blessings is in discovering your identity. Like David, experience victories in your life that will inspire others. You will also receive Dale Mass's two-part audio CD teaching series, Shattering the Limitations of Pain, Overcoming Identity Thieves. Through this anointed teaching series, you will understand that when your identity gets broken, distorted, or hidden in pain and guilt, you will be severely limited in your walk with God. Learn the keys to recognize God's assignments for your life. Discover how to have God the Father become your dream builder. Begin to reclaim your true identity. Dale Mask wants to teach you how to find the blueprint for your jailbreak from pain. Plus, you will also receive Dale Mask's interactive pamphlet, Your Destiny Tracking System. This unique pamphlet includes exercises, a dream list, self-evaluation questions, meditations, and activations to cancel the enemy's lies and cultivate your God-given identity. Don't miss out on getting Dale Mass's revelatory book, And David Perceived He Was King, and his two-part audio CD teaching series, Shattering the Limitations of Pain, Overcoming Identity Thieves, plus his pamphlet, Your Destiny Tracking System. This is an exclusive offer for our It's Supernatural audience. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9812. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural. P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28278. Please specify offer number 9812 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today. Welcome back. We're going to be talking now about the love of the Father and how to receive, really, receive the love and how to walk in sonship because that's so vital to your walk with the Lord. You have to believe and actually receive that you are a son, believe and receive that you are a daughter. So share about what um, the Lord's revealed to you about that. Well, first of all, I want to go back to the conversation we had about authenticity. You know, if somebody has a very expensive purse, an LV, like they say, well, was it made in China or did it come from the LV factory? So the, the purse could be the same, but the source is what causes it to be authentic. Okay, so we have been created by Father God. If we do not go back to the source, we cannot live an authentic life. We have to see God as our Father. After preaching a sermon, my daughter came up to me and, you know, the prayer, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And my daughter Heidi said to me, Dad, I think the hallowed name of God is Father. And you need to say, He is my Father. He is our Father. See, when you say He's my Father, that means you have a direct favor. You have a direct, uh, you have a direct line to heaven. 
And so sometimes when you're going through your life and things are not going well, you just need to say to the enemy, I wouldn't mess with me if I was you because God's my father and he will take you out. You know, I'm, t I'm talking to the devil, yes. the enemy, don't mess with me. So one time uh, I was working in the summer, I was, before I was a pastor, I was a painter in the summer, a teacher in the, you know, school year, and uh, I'm painting with this man, and uh, he, he's not as committed as me, we're painting, we're working together, and uh, as a matter of fact, his wife called up and said, you know, would you pray for Bob, he's been drinking his six pack of Bud, and I think he's starting to get light, you know, drunk, and, and we both needed money, and he was praying, oh God, bless me, bless me, and I'm working, and you know, I was raised men, and I were good works like that, we mm -hmm. work hard, and, mm -hmm. and uh, that next morning, he said, praise God, Dale, I got $500 in the mail. And uh, I, I was like, praise God. And like, <laughs> now I talk to God, I said, God, this isn't right. Don't you see he's drinking Bud Light or Bud, and, and here I've been more holy, and, and he got $500 in his mailbox. Where, what, there's nothing in my mailbox. And he said, Dale, he's asking me for it. You're trying to earn it. Wow. He said, he understands a principle, I honor faith, not your good works. Mm -hmm. Now, this is the truth. We have to have the character to maintain what our faith obtains. Character maintains, but faith obtains. Some people that have less character can actually get more from God, like the prodigal son. Yeah. So what I'm saying is the prodigal son is a key. He got it because he asked the Father. And some of you right now need to ask God for the best of heaven. And in it, because you know He loves you, not just this much, He loves us all this much. Mm -hmm. And His arms are around us. He so favors you and me that, but we have to believe His goodness, not ours. We focus in on it. Mm -hmm. And so, as we're talking today, there's some people that have businesses, and they're just, they're just getting by, and they're trying to make it work. Why don't you invite Father God into your business? Say, Father God, help me with my business. Help, give me ideas. I, I, he, you said you'd never leave me. So when I'm doing a project, I just sometimes I'll be doing it. I say, you know, Father, I say Father God a lot. Mm -hmm. Father God, would you help your son Dale with this? I don't quite know how to do this. Would you help me with this? How many know that fathers like to help sons and daughters yes. when they're invited? Yes. So that to me is really important. And so I've learned to ask, and that's, uh, and that's about a relationship. Mm -hmm. And the beauty about, what I love so much about that story whenever I read it, what really grabs my heart is when the father runs out to the son and he's running and he's holding his robe and he has these gifts with him. And it reminds me of no matter what I've went through, no matter how far I've fallen, Mm -hmm. No matter how much sin I've been in or what I've done, when I come back, the Father is running for me yes. and has not forgotten about me and has not left me and is, is there for me. And I know there's people watching where they've not made perfect decisions mm -hmm. and they their guilt of their sin and shame is really heavy on them and keeping them from turning back to the Father. So will you just pray? for those people that have been dealing with guilt and shame and, and not wanting to turn back because they feel they're not worthy. Yes, and I pray that, you know, it's interesting, the father didn't take those things out to the son, he gave them after the son just wanted him. Mm. So we go back for the father and the son said, I'll just be a servant, and the father said, no way. You're a son to me Amen. and you're coming back as a son and you get full rights as a son. I'm going to tell you, don't let your past downsize you to a servant. God doesn't need a servant. He needs sons and daughters. And I speak an anointing of restoration over you that you're going to receive not only His love, but you get back the robe, the ring, the sandals, but you enter into the celebration of the Father that opens up your life. Some of you are about to come under such an anointing, your whole life is literally going to go into a dream from heaven and you're gonna be amazed at His grace over your life. Mm. Live privileged, He's that good of a Father. Mm. And the Lord's showing me right now, there's someone who your daughter is dressing almost like, 
I want to say it's a goth like. I see her. She has um, a pentagram necklace, and she's very artistically anointed. She draws a lot in this little book I see, and it's almost like animation drawing, like Japanese animation. God's anointed her with such a beautiful gift from his heart, and I just want to speak over your daughter and just release the love of God over her and tell you that she will not miss her destiny and she will use her gift for the glory of God. And I just release the love of Father God upon you guys right now. Father, I just pray that your beautiful and holy presence would come into their homes right now and would begin to fill them, fill them fresh today, Holy Spirit, with your beautiful love. Let them know how much they're loved and accepted by you, Father, and I pray that they live an abundant life, hand in hand with Jesus, and that you would give them all the desires, the wants, and the needs of their hearts in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you so much for joining us today on Something More. We'll see you next week. God bless.